Okay. It's day 35 of our one hour day workout. Make sure the volume is up. Yeah, the volume is up. Um, uh, today is Sunday. I almost didn't make it today. But I said, let me get up and um, go ahead with it. Because, um, you know, when you're older, you get these pains sometimes. And you don't know where they come from. <laughs> So I had caught a pain right under here. And I'm not a smoker. You know those kind of chest pains that you, you get when you're a smoker? I caught a pain right under here. I was washing my hair. I don't have my ponytail. I got a little braid. I braided it. But um, I'm off today. Okay, y'all? Day 35. Today is Sunday. <sighs> I wasn't gonna go through with it, but I laid down for a little while and you know, and I started feeling a little bit better, so. Got the old, old people pains, old lady pains. I caught a pain for no reason, right up underneath my arm, underneath my chest, right there. <clears throat> and, um, I said, I'm only going to do the heavy bag today, and then I'll do some talking. But I said, I changed my mind since I'm feeling a little bit better. Let me try to get down on the floor and do something. So we're going we're gonna to do as much as we can today. We're going to do as much as we can today. <clears throat> Just down here like my little pillow. This is my little headboard <laughs> box. And my little yogurt mat. <clears throat> and like I say, get down here easy. Cause um I used to flop down on my butt. And then, um, now I got pain in the cheekbone in my, in my right thigh. So be careful if you're getting down on the floor that you don't just flop your body down there. Mm, so, you know, I want to get in my tub, but in order to, you know, take my nice hot steamy bath, I said, um, <laughs> gotta be skipping over my workout because I usually do my workout and then, um, take my, take, take a steam bath, you know, because that's, you know, relaxing to me. That's my best spot, <laughs> you know, other than my bed. <laughs> that's my, my most relaxing spot is the hot tub. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, what I wanted to talk about today, um, another reason why this here uh, workout came about today is because I said, you know, if I don't do nothing but hit the heavy bag and um, talk, um, that'd be cool, too. You know, because like I said, I'm not feeling the best. I'm getting some old lady pains under the, the left chest. And um, from time to time, I get that. So it's not really like something new. It just like comes and goes. And um, I had plenty of chest X x-rays and exams. And the doctor said just because you get pain in the chest doesn't mean... Um, cancer so it's always negative on the cancer tip so it's not that it's basically most likely using my muscles a lot using those muscles because I do these sit-ups and I'll be pulling with this um resistant band and um 
I'll be doing, trying to do push-up planking and all of that stuff and trying to handle my body weight, you know. And I'm not, I'm not no expert at, you know, how you should be doing your workout or nothing like that, so. Um, maybe there is something I'm doing wrong, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> so I'm going to just, like, take it easy today. If I stop early, that's because, you know, I'm having some pain, but, um, what I did want to do was um, follow-up discussion from yesterday. And I believe the discussion yesterday was about the situation that happened to the lady in Harlem with the um, the two black guys. I think it was two or three of them. I'm not sure how many of them. I think she had a problem with two of them in the liquor store. They jumped her, bit her. And then a, a third guy warned her that she, she should leave the block before they come back, you know, because I guess she was hanging around or waiting for the police or something like that. So she was warned that she should, you know, <clears throat> that she should, you know, leave, you know. Um, I do understand that they had uh, some kind of a meeting at the liquor store where the situation happened in Harlem, and um, they, I'm not sure if they found the guys or or not, you know, because their face was clear, clearly visual, you know, the camera was light and good on the, um, on the video, but, you know, it's the time of coronavirus, so they had the masks on, so you know, masks and hats and stuff. <clears throat> so all they probably really have to do is probably change their hairstyle. It's probably somebody in their family or their friends that know who, who they are, probably not turning them in. But um, what I wanted to talk about today, <clears throat> what I wanted to talk about today was... Um, you know, these these young men, they come from uh, upbringing, you know what I'm saying? Like, somebody's teaching them, like, so my question is, um, like, what is your OG teaching you? Is your, OT, is your OG teaching you, you know, not to respect women and kids? Because um, I am particularly used to... Uh, not that I was in any gang, but somebody that um, used to be a gang uh, uh, member or leader um, turned um, uh, into like a, a legal organization. And I'm trying not to give up no names or <laughs> trying not to be too des descriptive of the person, but he used to teach... Um, he used to say, um, like when he used to have his meetings, he used to, um, you know, cause he was a fearless guy, you know what I'm saying? Like he didn't take no crap from nobody. So his thing was like, he not taking nothing from nobody. He don't care about women and kids. So <laughs> it was a thing where, you know, if he had to hurt women and kids, he would hurt women and kids too. Which is also understandable when it comes down to some craziness, you know what I'm saying? When it comes down to a wild situation, like in third world countries, um, you know, some kids carry um, guns because they have like so much wars and stuff like that, that little kids, little boys be like five years old carrying guns and knowing how to shoot guns and stuff like that. So sometimes... Them soldiers be going over there and they be get, getting killed by kids, you know? Or or maybe even women that they trying to, you know, talk to or whatever the situation is. You know, they might be, you know, on break or uh, at a bar or whatever they do out there in those countries when, you know, 
when them soldiers go over there. And I'm quite sure they have, you know, days that they work and they probably have days that they off. And they probably deal with, you know, women or wander around and, you know, see little kids or whatever the situation is. And, you know, a lot of them little kids carry guns and a lot of them women, you know, they shoot. <laughs> so I understand kind of like what he's saying, but being over here in America, <laughs> Where is, you know, you're not going to encounter that type of thing really with women and kids. Women and kids and kids are usually, you know, doing their thing, doing the family thing. They're usually, you know, the woman is usually shopping or laundry or taking care of the household or taking care of the kids. The kids are usually, you know, the young kids are usually, you know, going to school or going out to play or something like that. They're not really war-torn kids. Now, our teenagers, like the young boys, or <clears throat> some of these young boys get involved in the streets, like, um, in their teens, like, they might be 14 or 16 or something like that, and they, they come out into the streets. Ones where their parents are drug addicts, they might come out even younger, maybe like 12 or even 10 years old. So you got to sometimes watch out for these little kids too, you know what I'm saying? So I kind of get what he's saying, like, he not, you, you can't bring nobody at him, you know, to disrespect him or come at him where he's not giving nobody a pass, not no woman or no kids. And, um... I understand what he's saying <clears throat> when he's saying that. <clears throat> I'm not doing much today. I told you at the beginning, I had a little pain under my left chest, on the left side, under my left breast. And um, I'm being careful today, okay? So he used to preach this thing. You know, we used to have meetings, and he used to, you know, every time we have a meeting, he used to say, and I don't care about women and kids. And the thing about it was, was that I used to bring my, I used to be there, and sometimes I used to be bringing my daughter. So I personally uh, took offense, you know what I'm saying? I personally used to take offense, but I didn't say anything, <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Because he he was the type that didn't like, he just liked to give a me, and he didn't like nobody to talk, you know, in response to anything or debate anything that he say. So I'm thinking with the gangs, you know, running rampant now in all the states and everything like that, everybody's bloods, crips, and all of these gangs, right? What are they teaching, you know? Um, i never been a part of a gang, so I really don't know. But it's obvious it's obvious, you know, with what's taking place. Like they teaching like like you don't have to have respect for women and kids, you know what I'm saying? Or you know what I'm saying, or if they're not including the kids they definitely, you know, saying some kind of disrespect for, towards women, you know? It's, it's something going on. It's something going on because I can't see somebody, parent, teaching them that other than, you know, a mother telling her son, you know, to put his girlfriend in check, you know what I'm saying? Like... Sometimes mothers and, and girlfriends, you know, the son's girlfriends don't get along. 
And, you know, the, the mother might tell her son, you know, yeah, well, you better put her in check or something or, you know, don't bring her back to my house no more or, you know what I'm saying? Or, you know, you need to find you another girl or something or put her in check. So the dude be trying to put her in check and it might lead to a, an abusive relationship, you know what I'm saying? So my my question is today, what is your OG teaching you? Is he teaching you the right thing? Because a lot of these guys, you know, if they join a the gang, obviously they probably didn't finish high school. <laughs> Some of them probably didn't finish junior high school. You know, they probably never made it to the ninth grade. <clears throat> But one thing that I liked it that I learned when I went to college was they taught professionalism. And I went to school for music production, you know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, that's something where you be independently working on music or you might work in studios or whatever the situation is or, you know... If if you luck up and you could work, you know, on a movie post production or something like that, that's cool. But every every course we got credit, you know, they gave us ten points credit for professionalism. So as long as you stay professional, communicating and emailing with your professor, if you had any discussion or disagreement, as long as you kept it professionally, professional, and did everything, you know, operated professionally, you get them 10 points. So I think it was like, you had to have like a 70 each class. So all you really needed to get, um, as far as your academics was, make a 60, you know what I'm saying? Because you're automatically going to get 10 points from, you know, being professional, you know what I'm saying? So I thought that was a good deal. <clears throat> I thought that that was a good deal. That's that's a good idea for a school to do, to teach professionalism, and they don't teach it in one course or just at the beginning or nothing like that. It's every... It's every class, and it, and we was doing one class a month, and that was an online school. Full Sail University is the school that I went to. <sighs> and so um, every every month was a new class. We might have one class a month, or some some months we would have two classes. It might be an art class and then a production class or something. Two classes together every once in a while, not all the time. <clears throat> but they always give you professionalism, t 10 points for professionalism. You know, I guess as long as you don't send like a, a email cursing them out, you know what I'm saying? Because you're not really going to be on the phone with nobody. So long as you... Um, if you had issue or you had to communicate and you sent the an email and you structured it, you know, professionally. And, you know, address them correctly in a professional manner, you know, you get your 10 points, you know. Even if you had like a hard disagreement, like as far as a grade is concerned or or if you felt like you were failing that class, but you felt like you should have been passing that class, or, you know, or, you know, something like that. Whatever whatever the situation was, you had to be professional. And so, and that's what I think these guys are missing. I think that they're missing, they're missing a, a life lesson um, like all people don't consider college uh, a, a necessity because you have people like Floyd Mayweather, you have some millionaires, a lot of millionaires that, you know, didn't graduate from high school or never went to college or, or dropped out of college 
<laughs> to pursue, you know, their business and became millionaires. You know what I'm saying? So, um, <sighs> you know, everybody's not going to uh, express that, but that's one thing I want to express from my, what I got out of college that is one of the things that shines, outshines, you know, everything is professionalism, you know what I'm saying? To keep it professional. So as I go on in life, um, I just try to, you know, I think that's a good idea to be professional with everything that I do. I try my best to be professional, you know, as much as I can. Sometimes when I'm, you know, I'm doing these, you know, hood stories or whatever the situation or talking about the streets or thugs or whatever, you know, I might use the word nigga or something like that, you know, and that I need to keep out of my vocabulary. But other than that, you know, I try to be professional. <sighs> Uh, mainly when I'm communicating on a business level with business people, you know. Um, even if I have a disagreement, you know, I try to draw up a letter and, you know, type it up professionally and word it professionally and stuff like that, you know. So, I'm just thinking, like, these poor guys that they only have... OGs to look up to, you know, that they feel like they never going to go to college. They never going to straighten out their life. So the only thing that they got to listen and listen to is the attitude of a OG, <laughs> you know, somebody that's older than them that probably didn't never go finish school, that just lived all their life in the streets. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> I'm not saying that person can't teach you nothing because clearly, you know, that person got a lot of street smarts, you know what I'm saying? Probably how to survive in the street and stuff like that. But that person probably have a lot of ignorant stuff too, you know what I'm saying? That, you know, you know, you, um, like I say, well, People that go to the military, you know, they, they learn a certain amount of probably control or discipline. I've never been to um, to the uh, military, so um, I really don't know. But, you know, being having, you know, sergeants and captains and all of that stuff like that, you know, you got to, you know, probably dress a certain way, make your bed a certain way, be up at a certain time, you know, line up in a certain way. You have a certain amount of discipline that you're supposed to have. And all and all of those military guys' pictures, they all be looking the same. If you see, like, um, ever see the guys that go to the Marines and they have their pictures, they all look like they're in shape. They all look, you know... With the same build, they all, all almost look like twin brothers. You know what I'm saying? That they followed the guidelines of the military to the point where they all just have the same look. You know what I'm saying? <clears throat> you know, the same haircut, the uniform, the hat. And then their face look like, you know, they worked out so much. You know what I'm saying? They all look kind of like fit and have the same facial expression. <clears throat> so these street guys is, is missing out, you know, on a lot. You know, what they think is good is is really bad, but it's good for what they want to do. They want to come up and become rappers and try to make it in the hip-hop and stuff like that. But... You got but so much time for that, you know what I'm saying? And even if you do make it in hip hop, how many years is they gonna give you? You know what I'm saying? A lot of these guys, a lot of these rappers, where they at? You know what I'm saying? And you got, you got good rappers like Lloyd Banks and Young Buck and all them that that they rap good. You know what I'm saying? 
And they could put out a good rap song right now. You know what I'm saying? But, you know, a lot of them, uh, where they at? You know what I'm saying? Like, if you if you make it, how many years is you going to get? Are you going to get enough years in the business to pay back um, the money that you owe? You know what I'm saying? Are you going to make enough hit songs to pay back? The money that's spent on you in the studio, the money that's fronted to you, and all kind of stuff like that. How are you gonna come out of that game? A lot of them, a lot of rappers don't come out on top. <clears throat> it's the labels that you know you done signed all your rights over to. So if your music is making any oh, couple of bucks, the label is getting that. You know they gotta you know recoup their money. So. A lot of black and Latino um, young men are, you know, uh, staring down the wrong path, you know. You know, while you having a dream to become a rapper and you writing your raps, go to school too. Because if you could write a rap and put together, you know, those words and do all of that, you can um, get your GED and... Um, try to get a trade. If you don't go to college, you could try to study your trade, you know, go straight after what you're um, looking to get into. <clears throat> and, you know, hopefully your school will teach you some form of uh, professionalism, you know. Ah. <sighs> And this way, you will control your attitude. And when you deal with people that, like those guys in, in that liquor store, thought that, you know, she said that the guy said, oh, oh, you think you're better than me? You know, so when you get that kind of thinking, which is kind of like a psychotic thinking, you know what I'm saying? Because how you going to think what somebody else is thinking? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How you, how you going to think... You know, why she acting the way she acting, you know? <clears throat> Unless you a uh, psychic and you, you know, know what she been through her whole day, you know what I'm saying? You don't know what she been through her whole day, you know what I'm saying? Or she just don't feel like being bothered. You know, men can't respect a woman that don't feel like being bothered. I don't feel like being bothered today. Uh, can I buy you a beer? Can I buy you your bottle? No. You know? Because what, what comes with that? If I allow you to buy me my bottle, what I got to do? Go home with you or you got to come to my house with me? Like we got to drink this together? <sighs> then you with your man. So what y'all going to do? Rape me? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Gang rape me? You know what I'm saying? So she did the right thing but you know, rejecting the offer. You know what I'm saying? Even if the offer was innocent. Suppose she would have suppose she would have said, Okay, yeah, you go, you go, um you know, suppose she liked it him and said, Yeah, okay, <laughs> you know, you could buy the bottle and she chilled with them and stuff like that and she you know, she would have never seen that attitude out of him where he bit her in her face and didn't even know her out of nowhere. You know what I'm saying? Post, she would have really liked it him and was rapping to him and hanging out with him that night and got into a relationship with him and didn't see that side of him at first and then end up with a, a, a fatal attraction where a nigga end up killing her one day, you know? <clears throat> So she rejected, she rejected them. They jumped her, kicked her, and bit her in her face and stuff like that, so. <sighs> you know, it's bad that that happened, but then it's, you know, it's good that, you know, because they, they didn't look like bad looking guys, you know what I'm saying? And one of them did look a little crazy, but you know, they didn't look too bad of, of guys, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> they looked at like guys that, you know, you know, one of these young girls would probably hang out with, you know? 
be like, oh yeah, you can buy my bottle, you know. Bailey, mainly a young girl that's short of of money, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you can buy my bottle. Uh, you know, a lot of these young girls be like, yeah. You know, they be ready to hang out. You know, they be ready to meet a guy, a nice guy, and hang out. And a guy that offers to buy something, you know what I'm saying? You know, and put out his money and stuff like that. Be like, wow, you know what I'm saying? But she was smart enough to say no for whatever reason. And it could be, like I said yesterday... Because I think they had on colors, like red or blue coats or something, you know. That's another thing. The way you dress. You know what I'm saying? Like, a lot of times, our youth, you know, they want to they wanna dress in the, um, the latest... Um, urban, you know, hip-hop style, whatever the latest style is out, <clears throat> you know. But that might be a turn-off for some people, you know what I'm saying? You know, walking around with your jeans half off your butt, you know, because that's the style, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, you got on nice sneakers. You might have on expensive jeans, you know what I'm saying? You might have on a nice coat, but because it's blue or red, it's saying that, you know, you down with Bloods of Crips and, and that, you know, I think guys, a lot of guys think that being down with a gang is a turn on for some, for, for some woman because I guess they feel like, you know, he got back up or, you know, he could protect her. He, you know, he might have his boys or whatever the situation is. But for other females that, like I said, go to school, learn professionalism, want a decent guy, want an educated guy and stuff like that, you really don't want to meet a guy that, you know, is in the gang. You don't want to really meet a red or a blue, you know what I'm saying? You might want to meet a guy that, that's wearing a trench coat, carrying a briefcase, you know what I'm saying? Wearing some... Uh, a suit and some um, shoes, you know what I'm saying? <clears throat> you know, be different. Be different from everybody else, you know? Don't always be the same like everybody else. <clears throat> Maybe you'll luck up and get that decent girl. <clears throat> <clears throat> You know, the one that's acting stuck up and stuff, you know. Oh, wow, I'm halfway through. And just imagine, I was going to put it off today. And I wasn't even going to do the floor routine today. I was just going to punch the uh, heavy bag. But the heavy bag, to me, gets a little boring. <laughs> So that's why I got down on the floor. Well, my chest was hurting today. And um, I was laying in the bed stuck and stiff. If you ever got one of those pains, and um, it used to go away quick, and it took some painkillers, and it still was taking forever. Ugh. I couldn't even answer the, the phone. My daughter called, and... I was talking to my granddaughter. My granddaughter wanted me to get up and get, find some kind of password or something for her. And I couldn't even move. I told her I'd call her later. <clears throat> Let's see if I can find some paper towel. I'll be right back. But when that thing happened with that with that lady in the home, I was like, wow. This is what I've been talking about, you know. And um, 
my problem is within my own family with my own first cousin, which is a male, that, you know, I don't know if he didn't think he was going to make it in life or whatever the situation is, but he kind of, like, knocked me out of my business to steal my situation from me and steal my connections and stuff like that and um, kind of, like, take my business that I was doing away from me and... and um, because he, he, he was a male, you know, it was kind of like they preferred him over me or whatever. Or whatever, maybe they didn't like me and they liked him, his, you know, or whatever the situation is. And not to damper on him or harp on him t today, you know, but just to say that this is what I've been talking about, you know. You know, kind of like being bullied or 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 um, taken advantage. You know, woman being bullied or taken advantage of, or you know, or life being destroyed, or you know what I'm saying, because of a man. You know what I'm saying. And, you know, I never had, you know, no situation like that happen to me, you know, because I'm not sure. These guys is not going to come forward to say what, what she might have said in that story because when I seen the video, you know, you, I didn't hear no audio, you know what I'm saying? But she said they was, uh, they was uh, saying, what you think? You think you better, better than us? You know what I'm saying? Um, but I don't know what her reply was. I don't know what kind of, um, dialogue she had with them. You know what I'm saying? What she was, what, what feedback she gave them, if any. But what I would have did is if the guy would have asked me, you know, you know, hey, ma'am, can I buy you, you know, your bottle for you? I'll buy your, your wine for you or whatever situation. I would have been like, no, thank you. And then if he would have continued to talk and stuff, um, I would have probably just said, okay, good night, y'all. And I probably would have walked out the store. So I'm not sure. And I'm not giving them guys an excuse for doing what they did. But I don't know if she said something slick out of her mouth or, you know what I'm saying? Because any little thing, you know what I'm saying, will tick these guys off. You know what I'm saying? Anything, any little thing will tick them off, you know. Any little thing that you do or roll your eyes or twitch your body, body language, any little thing. So you got to just kind of like, no, thank you, walk straight and and regular and try to get up out of there away from these guys and stuff like that because they be staying down your back. And one thing I always say is that it be the woman that rejects them that they be, like, marching after. Like, if if she turned them down and she didn't want them to buy, she didn't want them to buy her bottle, right? Why would you follow her out the store across the street and you know, beat her down the door. Why are you so offended that way? You know what I'm saying? There's a whole bunch of other women coming down the block. That's Harlem. You know how many women is coming down the block? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, if she said no, you know what I'm saying? You know how many other women is coming down the block? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know how many other women um, that you could probably find that will want you to buy them a bottle that's not inside the store? She's inside the store because she got her money ready and ready already and ready to buy a bottle. There's other women that's probably standing outside of the liquor store that don't have no money for their bottle that you could go outside of the liquor store and say, hey, baby, you want to drink? You know what I'm saying? You want to chill? Or, you understand what I'm saying? They didn't need to. Um, it's something with guys like that. The girls that's like running after them and craving for them to come and when are you coming home or are you on your way and be calling them all the time and all day long, they ignore those those women. Those women that be laying up in the bed with their laundry on, with their legs cocked open, ready, you know, for the nigga to come home. Nope, he don't want to go there. 
He want to, he want he looking for the girl that, that, you know, rejects him all the time. You know what I'm saying? If she don't like you, she don't like you. You know what I'm saying? If you're not her type, you're not her type. You know what I'm saying? You know? Sometimes I be thinking my cousin that way too. Like, um, his, his, his image is not, you know, before I was out the closet, because like I say, um, I'm gay, but before I was out the closet, I used to like these pretty boys, you know, a nice Caesar cut and, you know what I'm saying, you know, light-skinned guys, you know, nice built and tall and stuff like that, you know, my cousin, he's dark-skinned, his hairline receded early and stuff like that, you know, and I liked it, the light, lighter-skinned guys, and I'm not sure if why later on in life, you know, um, I get such a fight out of him and uh, uh, he be trying to upstage me so much. But sometimes I think it's that because, you know, he know that, you know, that he's he's not my type, but you you my cousin. So, you, you, you know, you're not supposed to be liking me and I'm not supposed to be liking you. You know what I'm saying? But, you know. Sometimes it be like that in family too, you know what I'm saying? Like if your family don't think that you like dark skins and shit like that, then all of your dark skin family be hating on you. If your family think you don't like light skins, then all the light skin people be hating on you, you know what I'm saying? So I've always been an in-between, you know what I'm saying? From a kid, I was, you know, more fair skin. As I got older, I'm, I'm darker skin or whatever the situation is, but you know. Uh, that's the issue, you know. Uh, Sometimes, you know, they wanna, they wanna be able to, you know, beat you out. You know what I'm saying? Like back when we was kids, um, you know, it was the Jackson Fives and Michael Jackson, and he used to bleach his skin, and it was all about light skin, and you know, the whole industry was all about, you know, light skin, you know, blacks and stuff in the entertainment industry and stuff. But nowadays, that situation turned around to more of the darker skin, and you know, they wear their dreads and stuff like that, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, it turned around, you know what I'm saying? But sometimes people hate you just for, you know, what you desire. You can't tell me what to like, you know what I'm saying? You can't tell me, you know, what to what to admire, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you can't tell me what to take a liking to, and I can't tell you what to take a liking to. There's some people that, you know, they don't have no preference, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know... They don't care if you light skin, dark skin, medium skin. <laughs> they don't care if you short, tall, you know what I'm saying? There's some people that, you know, you know, I don't know what you call them, worldly or whatever the situation is, but yeah. The girl rejecting them in the liquor store made them very highly upset to the point where he sunk his teeth in her. They jumped her. She was by herself. They punched him. Like I said, I don't know what might have came out of her mouth, and we're never going to find out from those guys because they never going to come forward to say, well, yeah, well, she said such and such and such because no matter what she said, don't want for you to do what you, what, what you did. You know what I'm saying? But, um, you know... She could have had some slick tongue feedback or something like that, or she could have looked at them like, you know, sucking her teeth and looking them up and down like they ugly or something, you know, or like they not her type, you know. Sometimes you do that, you make those facial expressions without noticing that you're doing that, <laughs> you know. Sometimes, you know, your body automatically do like a certain body language or a facial expression. And you don't realize that you're doing it, you know what I'm saying? And the other person catch it like, oh, what you think, you better than me? You know, you don't like me, you know what I'm saying? Like, why are you looking at me like that, you know? But well, what I was getting at was that it, there be women that be in love with these guys. I mean, love with these guys, waiting for these guys to come home, wish these guys, you know, always doing something, always 
wiggling their bodies in front of the guys, always winking or saying hi to the guy or something like that, always trying to get at the guy, you know, being very noticeable. But it be those women or even their own girls at home that be waiting for them to come home and they outside bullcrapping trying to talk to somebody that that's not interested. But in the meantime, they girl is constantly calling over the phone and when you coming home or are you coming over tonight? You know what I'm saying? But it don't be it don't be it don't be those ones that those those don't be the the women that they be you know you know, like they'll leave those women there, you know, begging and waiting for them to come while they out there being rejected by <laughs> you know, other women that don't want them, you know what I'm saying? It's it's strange, you know what I'm saying? Cause even I know this with me, you know, people might think that I'm stuck up. But what they really don't know is that, you know, I'm gay. I'm not really into men. You know, I'm not really into guys and stuff like that. So I'm not outside looking for no dick. You know what I'm saying? I'm not really outside looking for no man to bring upstairs home or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? Or to chill with or nothing like that. So um, they might think I'm stuck up for that reason. And another thing is that, you know, I don't, you know, I'm older now. I made it past 50 I used to risk my life, you know, running around in the streets and being all out all times of night to the wee wee hours in the morning. And, you know, now I just, you know, I like to make it home safe. You know what I'm saying? I go out and get what I need, try to get in before dark and, you know what I'm saying? And I just be trying to make it home safe now. You know what I'm saying? When you get older, it be like that. You know, when you're younger, you be all out in the street and stuff like that. But, you know, dudes probably think that, you know, Oh, she's all stuck up about herself and stuff like that. I'm not really stuck up about myself. I just don't have no desire, you know. I really don't have no desire, you know what I'm saying, uh, to be entertained by no guys. And, you know, not trying to get into no crap, you know what I'm saying. And um, not trying to get run no conversation where... You know, I have to reject anybody. And even though dudes be rolling their eyes at me and mugging, I, I try not to do it back, you know what I'm saying? Probably sometime I make a, a ugly face or something like that, but I try not to roll my eyes or mean mug back or nothing like that. I just try to walk with a straight face and get past them and, you know, get upstairs because one thing the guy knows is that if the situation escalates, that they will be able to whip your ass, you know? <laughs> you know? So they they do not hesitate to let the situation escalate, you know what I'm saying, when it comes down to squaring off with a woman, you know what I'm saying? They don't have no, like, yeah, what? What? Huh? What you say? Uh, you know what I'm saying? They be all, you know, and you got to be like, nah, you know what I'm saying? I'm good, you know what I'm saying? Because you're a woman, you know what I'm saying? And I guess, you know, that's the world that we live in, you know? But, um, yeah, y'all guys got to learn uh, professionalism, you know, and she might she might have rejected you that time. You know what I'm saying? Then you could have ran into her again next week or in two weeks or a month later in that same liquor store and tried again. And she might have been in a different mood the next time. You see what I'm saying? That's how women are. You know what I'm saying? That's how women are. Like... Today, I'm, I might not feel like it. I'm just going to the store to get what I need. I'm getting my stuff. I don't want to be bothered with nobody. I don't want to bump into nobody. I really don't want to say nothing. I don't even want to run into none of my friends to run the conversation. I just want to get my stuff, get in the house and chill out and go home and relax. I don't feel like stopping and talking or I don't even want to run into a girlfriend. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes you... Um, 
you feel that way. And w sometimes women feel that way. Mainly if it's that time of the month, you're on your menstrual. But, you know, that's another thing that guys got to consider, too, is that, you know, women be on their menstrual. You might be arguing and fighting with a woman and stuff like that, and them hormones, you know, you know, with the menstrual and stuff like that, it make you crampy and, you know, so you don't know what the situation could be with a, with a woman. You know what I'm saying? You don't know if she had a, a fight with her boyfriend last night, you know what I'm saying, or today, or, you know, if she had a kid that got on her nerves or her parents or she had a hard day at work or whatever the situation is. We get it from so many angles besides the fact that, you know, like I said, I wasn't even going to do this workout today because I caught a, a, a pain in my chest. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And it, it's probably nothing but like kind of like a pulled muscle because I was washing my hair today and I was bending over the sink for a long time, washing my scalp real good. And um, when I got up, I was all achy under here. You know what I'm saying? I laid down in the bed. My daughter called, and I couldn't even hardly talk to talk to my daughter and my granddaughter. I was like, I'll talk to y'all later, you know? And I can't move. I'm in pain, you know? Sometimes women go through that, you know? You don't know, you know, what the situation is. You know, we're not always feeling, you know, like with men, y'all don't get y'all periods, y'all don't get menstrual, so you know what I'm saying? So y'all always... Ready to go, you know. Y'all always good to go, you know what I'm saying? Y'all could work out all day and every day of the month, or, you know, whatever the situation is. Good thing I'm past, you know, the menopause and all of that, or whatever you call it, you know, where you don't get your menstrual no more. I'm older. Once you get over 50, you know, you don't be dealing with that. So that's one of the good things about being over 50, you know. Not to talk about my personal business, but, you know, I don't never hide my age, you know what I'm saying, so. But that's one of the things that could have been, um, you know, could have been wrong with her, too. She she, she might have been on her, her menstrual or something like that, just want to get her liquor and go, go upstairs and, you know, use the bathroom and freshen up, you know what I'm saying? You don't know. You know, as women, we, we gentle, even though if we um, have a hard exterior, you understand what I'm saying? There's a lot of delicacy uh, going on, you know, inside, you know what I'm saying? We might even come out our face hard, you know what I'm saying, and say something slick or something like that, but you know, we're not trying to fight, <laughs> you know, we're not trying to like square up, you know what I'm saying? We're not really trying to do all that, you know what I'm saying? We just trying to say, you know, we don't feel like it back off, you know what I'm saying? But if you run into the wrong dudes out here, forget it, you know what I'm saying? That's why I kind of like turn the other cheek. You know, something when I was younger, I used to be like, yeah, if a nigga mess with me out here in these streets and stuff like that, I just make one phone call, you know. <laughs> and we didn't even have cell phones back then, so you have to go to the pay phone and drop the dime. You know, I'd make one phone call and have a nigga taken care of, you know what I'm saying? And that's how that used to be, like, my attitude when I was younger and stuff. I, I really wasn't one because I was a slim, like, 110, 120 pound, you know, you, you know, teenage girl and stuff like that. I was always slim figure, so I wasn't really a fighter out here, but I used to like to hang out. But in my head, I used to be like, you know, if I have any problems in the street, you know, I can make one phone call and niggas will come, you know what I'm saying, back up or whatever the situation is, you know. But I didn't carry myself in no gangster way or nothing like that. I just, you know, I just knew that in my head, you know, a couple of incidents I got into, I had to make a phone call or whatever. One guy tried to kidnap me one time before. I was hanging out with my girlfriend and her, her parents had like a beauty salon and you know, we used to do our hairs and stuff like that and um, the park was right next to the house and we used to chill in the park and stuff. And then the train station was down the block and that's, you know, where I had to go, you know, when I'm leaving or if I'm coming over to my girlfriend's house, I used to take the train. and. 
there was this guy that used to be trying to talk to me and he looked at like a bomb. It looked like he lived in the street. And I used to be rejecting him and he threatened me one day and he told me I better not come, you know, when I come down the block, you know, next time I come down the block that he was gonna, you know, hurt me. He was trying to like trap me, you know what I'm saying? So I had to call. And um, I don't know, I had another, it's just like two incidents I had to make the phone call. Not really much, right? But now that I'm older, it's like, I ain't got to call anybody. If I have to make a phone call, it's going to be to the police. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I'm not going to call no other niggas on no other niggas right now. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You know, like, that's crazy. Like... You're going to call, you know, if you can make, a, you know, back in the days, we could make one phone call and call somebody to come get the other guy. You know what I'm saying? So you're going to call this guy to come, come get into trouble and fight with this guy. You know what I'm saying? So now your friend you calling, if the cops come, he going to get arrested. You know what I'm saying? For whatever he do. So the phone call that you're making to that person is to come get into some trouble when that's the police job, you know what I'm saying? If you really, a female, you're into some trouble, even a man or a kid, if you're into some trouble, whatever the situation is, it's um, the police job to um, handle a criminal uh, situation. If you feel like your life, you, you're in danger or somebody's gonna harm you, it's really not for you to call a friend or a, a group, or another group of people to come take care of the situation. You know what I'm saying? Because then that's, you know, that's gang activity. That's the shit that they locking niggas up for now. You know, the Rico. You know what I'm saying? Whatever one person do, you're all going up for it. You know what I'm saying? So now I just. Turn the other cheek if you know a dude look like he rolling his eyes at me, me mugging or acting funny. You know, usually they act funny when all their friends is out there. If they by themselves, they usually like hold the door open for you. They act like a gentleman and stuff. But when they all, all their friends is around, it just seems like they just start acting real ignorant. You know, and you know, me mugging and rolling, rolling their eyes and you know, muscling up and doing all of that stuff, you know. And I just keep on walking. As long as nobody don't touch me physically and stuff like that, you know. I just keep on walking. I don't say like, well, what you looking at? Why you looking at me like that? Ugh. I don't I don't get into it, you know. That's what they waiting for you to get into an argument with them. And then they be like, what you say, bitch? Pow. You know what I'm saying? And knock you down or something like that. Then it's really on because now... You got to do something, you know what I'm saying? And you you going to be very upset. You going to want that person hurt, you know what I'm saying? If a guy put their hand on you, you going to want them hurt. You can't hurt them if you by yourself, you know what I'm saying? Unless you get a gun, you know what I'm saying? And you shoot them, and then you go into jail. And if you got kids, you know what I'm saying? It just doesn't work out for a female. The streets, it just doesn't work out for a female to get into it with a dude. And then if you got brothers or cousins or something like that, and you call them to, to deal with this dude, if this dude is in the gang, now you're getting your family or your people involved with a problem, a back and forth problem where somebody could get killed. You know what I'm saying? And then if you call the police, then you're a snitch. <laughs> so, you know, you can't win for losing out here. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, you got to, you know... Keep a straight face, keep it moving, stay professional. Don't let nobody bring you down to their level, to how they're acting. Stay how you want to be. Stay in, stay in the attitude that you want to stay in. If you feeling positive and you feeling in the positive attitude for the day, don't let somebody roll their eyes or mean mug um, at you and change your whole mood. You know what I'm saying? You keep keep your keep keep um you know keep your professionalism you know so who made it today I can't believe it.
I can't believe it because I, I had some serious pains. I call them old lady pains when, you know, you get a pain um, that you don't know where it came from. But it probably came from the days of, you know, working out and stuff like that because I've been working out every day. Today is, what, 35 or something like that? Yeah, so for my heavyweight champs, this is the War Against Obesity. Uh, we completed, I think today is day 35. Um, I almost didn't do it today. Today is Sunday. Happy Sunday to everybody. Watch your diet. Try to do what you can do for an hour every day as far as working out. Um, what else? Um, like, subscribe, comment, donate. Look in the descriptions if you want to donate, sponsor, you have any advice or anything like that or techniques or anything, leave a comment and let me know. Any supplements and stuff that you feel that would be helpful for the body and stuff like that. Any advice, just, just give it. You understand what I'm saying? So, um, peace, y'all. I'm out. Uh, y'all men, um... If y'all got OGs and stuff that y'all listening to, you know, telling y'all the wrong thing, I advise y'all to get your lives together, you know, uh, try to get into, uh, get your GED, get into a, a program, a professional program of a skill or something like that where you can learn the proper way of moving around in society and dealing with other people that will be less combative and, you know, and uh, it'll complement your, yourself. You understand what I'm saying? You know, you want to, you don't want to be like everybody else. You know, you want to be, you want to look um, educated and, uh, you know, you got to remember you're not going to be young all your life. You're going to, you know, age. You understand what I'm saying? You start getting out of your teens into your 20s and having kids and stuff like that. You're going to start having a child that you have to raise the right way. You don't want to raise another gangbanger and be an OG and your kid might get killed in the street. You want to start moving more into being professional. You know what I'm saying? Dressing businessy. Pull up your pants. You know what I'm saying? Take off the jeans, you know, wear some suits, you know what I'm saying? You know, change your look up a little bit, you know? And um, respect the women out there. If they reject you or whatever the situation is, there's plenty of other women walking down the street, okay? So peace, I'm out, y'all.